When looking up at the night sky, it's fairly common to feel the urge to escape the bounds of planet Earth and get into the stars, but something we never stop to consider is the enormous amounts of energy a spacefaring civilization like the one we hope to become in as little as 100 years would require to achieve this endeavour. It seems like a strange question, but how we might go about powering our intergalactic ambitions someday is something that we may really need to start considering within the next century. But if we want to be a truly spacefaring civilization, then we would have to look to energy sources greater than the ones on our home planet, chiefly our host star. The sun is a huge source of light, heat and energy to the earth and single-handedly allowed for life on this planet to develop, and yet we use an absolutely minuscule fraction of its total solar output. Increasing its utilisation would be key to meeting our futuristic demands, but how do you even go about harvesting a star? How could one tiny civilization manage to completely harvest something millions of times bigger than our entire home world? The answer, or at least an answer, goes hand in hand with the Kardashev scale and what is known as a Dyson structure. A simple principle, take a shell and completely encapsulate a star. Straightforward at a high level, but almost impossible from our perspective. But a completely closed shell isn't just the only way. Since its popularisation in the 1960s, the Dyson Sphere has been edited, altered and hypothesised over to bring this almost inconceivable feat of engineering more closely within our grasp. And that's just us. All over the universe there are stars to consume, and with such a vast near vacuum of space and an abyssal supply, it's not hard to look up at the night sky and wonder, could this idea be in place somewhere in the universe? As civilizations grow, they need more energy to fulfill greater, ever-increasing desires. A star is an essential engine for life on any planet, be it plants or animals. And with this in mind, when you've broken free of the delicate position of your home world, why would you not seek to utilize more of a star's gargantuan solar output? Stars produce a phenomenal amount of power, for billions of years at a time, and there are hundreds of billions of stars in most of the billions of galaxies out there, and that's just in the part of the universe that we can observe. Whether or not you believe that we are heading for an unsustainable entropy someday, it's no secret that there is more power available in this universe than we could possibly imagine or use. But on our home planet, the Earth, we are missing out on nearly all of the estimated 380 septillion watts of energy the Sun is outputting. Naturally, with all we've already achieved as a race, it is human nature to wonder how we could possibly begin to tap into this energy source. Once harvesting a star, we could revolutionise our race with technology advancements never before thought possible. And once we've perfected the technique, we could use the energy to move further out, reach other stars and do the same thing again. This is just one of the ways that we could begin to turn the human race into a type 3 galactic civilization. We presume this principle to be a universal one, for all intelligent races that might exist, based on the rules of the Kardashev scale, the idea that civilizations evolve through set benchmarks based on the levels of energy they need, use and have available to them. Earth is on the cusp of becoming a type 1 planetary civilization, capable of utilizing all the energy from the sun that reaches our planet, but the next step up, and the middleman between us and a galactic civilization, is a type 2 stellar civilization, capable of controlling nearly all of the total output of its host star. It's not a difficult scale to follow, but the means of which we could become a type 2 race are very difficult to say the least. Michio Kaku, a world famous theoretical physicist, believes we can become a type 2 civilization in 100,000 years, but to reach that landmark we'll first need to be able to harvest our sun. But how? How could you even go about harvesting a star? This is where one of the most famous pieces of hypothetical machinery comes into the mix, the Dyson Sphere. The idea of putting a container around our sun to keep its output contained is a logical idea, but in practice is impossibly ambitious and very inefficient to approach. First proposed in the 1937 sci-fi book Star Maker, Olaf Stapledon detailed a diagram where a large planetary orbit-wide sphere encompasses a star and its surrounding life-supporting planets. This idea then formed the basis for Freeman Dyson 30 years later in his paper The Search for Artificial Stellar Sources of Infrared Radiation. In this paper, he detailed what has come to be known as a Dyson structure, a means of capturing the true potential of a star. In the decades since, this idea has been refined and tweaked from its old impossible format, down into a few ideas that are somewhat more achievable for planet Earth. The first is the most famous Dyson shell. 
This is the simple inefficient approach that would see a large shell placed around our star, perhaps with something like solar panels on the inside. This has been a popular feature of science fiction and fantasy but remains the largest and most resource consuming variant of the principle. Just look at the sizes we'd be dealing with. This unrealistic generalisation actually prompted Freeman Dyson himself to denounce the idea in 2013. So what about something a bit more reasonable? Well there is the idea of a Dyson ring. This would be the simplest form, a large ring of conjoined solar powered satellites forming a ring around a star. On the other side we could build colonies, each with a huge supply of power and maintained by the sun's gravity. This may be the most realistic approach for us, but we'd of course want to expand, and this is where the problems start. Adding more than one ring would create what is known as a Dyson Swarm. It would be a reasonable way to increase our presence and boost our capacity, but at this point orbits becomes a dangerous issue. A swarm dramatically increases the chances of two rings colliding, and the orbit of the star could potentially cause the debris it leaves behind to destroy the other rings, eventually bringing the whole colony down like dominoes. Adopting a similar approach, but accounting for the dangers of gravity, you have the Dyson Bubble. This structure is composed of many independent solar satellites suspended at certain points around the star. Not only are these satellites more safe from colliding with one another by default, but the use of a solar sail would allow for enormous amounts of the star's radiation pressure it releases to be caught, counterbalancing the gravitational pull of the star with an equal amount of force in the opposite direction, keeping all the satellites at an equilibrium. This may be the most realistic option for us as a species, but still requires a lot of work. At present, no solar sail and indeed no material we have access to could withstand solar pressure without being destroyed completely. By the time we might be in need of a more efficient use of our own sun, carbon nanotubes could provide a possible method, but then again, we haven't developed anything strong enough yet. Other variants of the idea include the Alderson disk, a similar principle to a Dyson sphere but flat and not spherical. We also have Larry Niven's sci-fi vision of a Dyson ring from his book Ringworld, where a civilization has a belt going around its star. And lastly we have the Dyson net, another not too dissimilar principle to things like Dyson swarms but that uses cables with nets in between to trap solar energy. All these ideas are being refined but and some are even being considered and researched into, however it's no secret that the tech technological drawbacks on this kind of project are far, far out of our control. The main primary object defeating purpose of a Dyson structure can be summarised with one word, scale. The sheer sizes we are dealing with are enormous, just look at our sun compared to the earth. Not only this, but you'd need a shell larger than the star itself to allow for functional room, and this adds billions of cubic miles to your internal project. Other drawbacks include the heat destroying any possible progress we could make, the gravity of the star tearing down our work, and another big hurdle, the resource requirements. The entirety of our planet and every natural resource on here wouldn't even come close to the material demands of a Dyson Sphere, in both quantity and durability. To create a Dyson Sphere even an inch thick, we'd have to completely harvest dozens of planets right down to their cores, completely inconceivable at the current time for our race. The very idea of a sphere is not only flawed by its own requirements but by its alternatives too. Developing solar power and making it more efficient and colonising systems by inhabiting surrounding planets are two much more reasonable ideas for us as a species. We don't need a star to get to Mars and we likely won't need a star's worth of energy to get somewhere like Kepler 22b in the distant future. Who says we would even need a star for energy? Humans are much closer to making a breakthrough in nuclear fusion technology, a clean, local and unimaginably efficient method of producing power and capable of enormous outputs. Why bother harvesting a star when a family could get all the energy they need for a day or more with a single cup of water? All these methods are more reasonable ideas, so does this mean we are caught up in science fiction and we are overlooking the obvious? Perhaps we need to reassess what we think are the requirements of Nikolai Kardashev's civilization benchmarks. Perhaps we are ignoring easy ways to generate similar outcomes. But, truth be told, it's just the construction that is inconceivable. Once set up, it could realise unending possibilities for mankind. So say we managed it and completed our Dyson structure, what next? 
Building our first Dyson Sphere would allow for the process to be evaluated, refined and perfected. Human instinct is to go further and beyond, and if we had the capabilities to build such a massive structure, we'd probably have the capability to visit other stars, and we could move to smaller stars like Proxima Centauri, our nearest neighbour, and we could begin the process again. This time we could automate parts of it too. With a more efficient technique established, we could use our newfound energy and apply it to the conquest of other stars and this could be one of the proposed ways we could begin to colonise the Milky Way galaxy. While this may not be the most efficient way to spread out in interstellar space, it would certainly allow for the most available energy and power of any method, which would make colonising planets in the star's solar neighbourhood much easier. But why look at it from a conquest perspective? There are those who believe we might actually be able to use a Dyson structure to achieve a perfect reality. With science beginning to ponder the possibility of discovering a way to transfer consciousness onto computers, there are those who have suggested that we should create some kind of structure with everybody's consciousness built into a perfect utopia, place this around a star and we could create literal heaven, lasting 10 billion years at a time. However, this is just a wish that some people out there have. It's unlikely that this would ever be possible given the instability of stars and the significant leap in science we'd have to make. But the idea is a profound one. Why rest your chances of eternal peace on a god that may not exist when you could use this feat of engineering to build paradise yourself? This is just one of the crazy ideas put forward and it does well to illustrate the outlandish potential of such a breakthrough. For now though, we are a long, long way off even coming close to being able to make something that could loop around, maintain, feed off of and withstand a star. As for other beings in the universe, well, we've made a few interesting discoveries that, to some, suggest that this principle may be universal. Freeman Dyson himself proposed that looking for Dyson spheres around other stars would be a great and efficient method of detecting extraterrestrial intelligence, as it could be determined through light fluctuations which would be observable from Earth. So you can imagine the hysteria that flooded the scientific community when star KIC 8462852 was observed to be dipping in luminosity by up to 22% in cycles that suggested a huge object, such as a cluster of solar satellites, may be orbiting it. This was observed in 2015 and caught the attention of the scientific community for a further three years, simply because no one could explain what was causing it and nobody could prove that this wasn't being caused by a Dyson structure. Though this theory is gradually starting to wear thin with the rise of new hypotheses of dust and planetary collisions, it did get us all thinking about the genuine possibility that this could be a universal principle, which could be being adopted by intelligent civilizations more advanced than our own. An urban legend in the astronomical community states that the infamous Boote's Void is so dark because it's being caused by a galactic civilization consuming stars and galaxies around it at a huge rate, though this is incredibly unlikely. Whether you believe in any of these controversial theories or not, there are estimated to be up to 100 octillion stars in the observable universe. That's one with 29 zeros after it. It's likely that if we are one of many intelligent races in the universe, some star somewhere is currently or has previously been harvested with Dyson structure leaning engineering. Of course, any race capable of pulling such an achievement off would have originated on a much more material rich planet than our own, so from our perspective, it's not really the best way we could colonise the Milky Way galaxy. And given the sheer material requirements, it's very likely that our stereotypical view of a Dyson sphere doesn't exist. But this doesn't rule out the likelihood of similar alternatives elsewhere in this enormous universe. Does this mean we should rethink the Kardashev scale? Dyson structures have become synonymous with Type 2 civilizations. Well, maybe not the scale itself, as the three landmark milestones are still basic principles of growth, but perhaps we should stop being so stubborn when it comes to the methods we assume a spacefaring civilization would use in order to get off their planet. Life is beautiful and life is weird. Maybe somewhere in our universe, some ingenious race has done the impossible and harvested an entire star. But maybe somewhere there is a race that has moved across their galaxy without it. We will just have to wait and see how our race evolves to get a better idea of the challenges ahead. All we can do in the meantime is look to the sky and watch the sun rise on our own curious planetary society. And with that, thank you very much for watching and as ever, don't forget to reach for the stars.